Hey everybody, it's Norm from Test.com. I'm here at Outside CES in Las Vegas, the Drone Rodeo. And I'm joined by Grant Martin, who is a product manager at Avagon. Now, if Avagon sounds familiar, we've interviewed them several times in the past. They make the Glyph. It's an HMD, and we're seeing the final version here and using it with quadcopters. Grant, how are you doing? I'm doing really well. It's good to see you, Norm. And it's really great to see the final version of the Avagon Glyph, which you're wearing. It looks like a pair of headphones, but it's not just headphones. So can you take it off and take a look at it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so we're bringing this to the market right now. It's actually uh, shipping just this month. Uh, we've spent a good two years in product development, and uh, we're actually going to start shipping uh, right now. So this is the final product, or the final product right here. This is the Glyph. Uh, it can be worn actually in audio mode, uh, quite simply, just by slipping over your head like this. But in uh, many use cases, uh, for example, in flying drones, it's uh, worn in video mode, uh, just like this. And it's a really interesting piece of technology because you're not putting LCDs or OLEDs as displays. It is an HMD, head-mounted display, but it's not traditional display technology. Right, yes. So this is the crux of the technology, right? Or the crux of the invention is that we're using micromirror technology to display the image. You actually project the image directly into your eye. Like tiny DLP projectors. Exactly, That exactly. bounce, refract, diffuse, and go into your eye. Right, and the product of that is you get this really sharp image that's really fast. And for use cases like this, when you're flying a drone, I mean, you need sharp images, you need fast images, and you want, you know, an a, a HMD where you can have some sort of situational awareness. So when I put this on like this, I could still see my controller, I could still see what's going on around me and um, you know, uh, stay rooted in what's going on. And that allows me to fly a lot better. Now, for people who uh, just heard about the Glyph, um, let's go for some quick technical specifications because it's not an HMD to compete with like a virtual reality headset. Like you said, it's about using this in addition to other things. You can use it to watch movies. What are some of the tech specs here? Right, exactly. So it's HDMI in, and, that, and that's one of the biggest uh, advantages of the technology. Uh, whatever you can plug uh, into an HDMI source, you know, your phone, your computer, et cetera, it will play with the Glyph. Uh, and, you know, by that token, it's not necessarily VR because you can, you know, play movies off of your computer or whatever you'd like. Uh, Specification-wise, uh, it's 720p per eye, but it's using a different core display technology. So it's like saying, you know, I have a 14 megapixel camera in my uh, phone, and you know, you, the sensor's only this big. So uh, different core technology. Uh, price points at uh, $600, and I think uh, shipping right now uh, uh, in January and February. Great. And one of the use cases is drones, of course, quadcopters. So we have this, the Parrot Bebop 2, uh, which they right. just announced. And this has an HDMI out. And so the idea is that you can wear the Glyph and then fly the Bebop? Yeah, actually. Uh, so the great thing about the, uh, the Glyph is, you know, since it's uh, HDMI and a lot of the digital drones coming to market right now work natively with it. Plug and play, just stick the HDMI cable in the side and it automatically works. Uh, depending on the way that it's connected, whether through it's, uh, whether it's through Wi-Fi or some other uh, connection technology, um, that can affect how the image comes in. But the Glyph itself, super fast, super clear image. With the Bebop 2, which actually is just coming out this year, um, you need the sky controller, which is what you're holding right here. And the yep. sky controller has HDMI out in the side right here in USB. So all you do is take it from the side of the glyph, plug it straight into the controller, and you can see what the drone sees pretty cool. Now, is it the exact same UI and HUD that you see when you have it connected to a phone, for example, with the Bebop, or do you get a pure video view, or are there different options? Well, so the neat thing is what, so I think the sky controller runs Android, right? And so you can pick whatever output you want. The on-screen display or the OSD is slightly different for the pilot or for the person who's got the eyes on versus what the screen displays. You'll get the HUD, you'll get the horizon and a few other things, but it's really a uh, image that's tuned for someone who's flying as a pilot up in the sky. Now, a lot of the quads you mentioned, in addition to the Bebop, also have digital output video out. Uh, like DJI's Phantoms and Inspires. Can we check out those as well? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've got a couple here we can walk you over and show you right now. All right, let's go check them out. Cool. All right, Grant, so we have the, the P3 Professional, Phantom 3 from DJI, and this one does have HDMI out. Uh, how's it connected to the Glyph right now? Yeah, right, so this is one of the most popular quadcopters coming to the market right now. And actually, straight out of the box, it doesn't come with HDMI. What you need to do is you need to get this add-on kit at the back right here. It's $99, just screw it into the back, and that'll oh. allow you to natively take HDMI straight out. But it's basically an FPV add-on for your drone, so it's an awesome add-on. Right. Uh, based, so what you have right here is a um, mini HDMI port. Plug that cable straight into the Glyph, and then you've got your straight up uh, FPV experience. Is plug and play? Yeah, plug and play. I would love to fly this with the Glyph on. Can we do that? Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Put the quad down right now. So I'm gonna put on the Glyph, 
And I'm gonna take off my glasses. Uh, and the reason I can do that is because you actually have um, focal on. adjustments, right? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, is it on right there? It is. Perfect. So on the glyph here, there's actually a nose bridge and uh, there's a couple dials. Uh, there's a IPD adjustment and you actually can rotate the lenses to focus. So that looks amazing. And you should be able to see exactly what's right in front of you pretty quick. The light bridge technology is super fast, so you could actually fly FPV without even seeing the drone in front of you. Yeah. I'll hand this to you. Just double check the latency here real quick. So there you can see yourself. I can totally see myself. This is great. And I have a on-screen HUD. I can see there's a horizon line. I got battery percentage, um, telemetry info. There it goes. That's the camera. Let's put it down. Let's, let's fly. All right, so I'm pretty adept at flying the, the Phantom 3 already. And what I like about the Glyph already is that, like you mentioned earlier, I can actually see the quadcopter. It's still in my field of view. It's that because I can look and I can see the quad right there. Right. No you're, problem you're able to maintain line of sight if you need it. Otherwise, you can look straight forward and see what the drone sees. Now, this is a digital technology. And one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is uh, digital versus analog. A lot of people who fly quads racing quads specifically, they really prefer the analog signals for low latency. Now, DJI's light bridge technology and the HDMI and the signals coming from other quadcopters add about you know, a couple hundred milliseconds of latency, but is that good enough for, uh, for what you want to do here? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is when you're, when you're racing, when you're uh, identifying targets that you're flying past and you're trying to avoid them, you need a really low latency. Uh, but if you're doing aerial cinematography, aerial photography, like you would do in a drone like this, a couple hundred milliseconds isn't going to kill you. Uh, as long as you're not doing any really dynamic maneuvers, a lot of people won't even notice. Uh, now, if you're trying to fly through trees uh, instantaneously, uh, you, want a, you want a faster solution. And the light bridge, while it's great, isn't you know, zero milliseconds. But I think that um, a lot of technologies coming to the market this year and next year are really going to cut down that latency. And you'll see a lot more drones. I mean, a lot of them are digital now, but even in the racing space, I think you could see them start moving towards digital. And you're relying a lot on the, the signal, like from the manufacturer. Here, the signal, the, the electronics are made by DJI. It's their, it's their algorithm, it's their compression. Um, how much does the glyph add to any of that? Yeah, well, I mean, one of the great advantages of the technology is that it's super fast. I mean, I think the glyph, you know, from source all the way to your eyeballs is something like 13 to 20 milliseconds. So imperceptible, barely imperceptible, if at all, uh, delay. Uh, the light bridge uh, will add a little bit if you're using a Wi-Fi connection, say through a, a Bebop or maybe a Phantom 2 Vision Plus. Uh, that'll add a little bit of latency too. But again, if you're just poking around your uh, you know, local park or just taking pictures from the sky, you won't even notice it. I find this actually to be much more enjoyable than looking at like a, a tablet screen connected to the controller. And even though uh, the displays here, you see are 720p, the pixel fill is so high that I can't, there's no like, uh, screen door effect at all. Right, and the other thing is, I mean, if you've ever flown a drone outside and you've seen a glare off of your tablet, you can't, you can't see the tablet at all. And the Glyph allows you to have like this nice blacked out screen in front of you. I, I like to compare it to, uh, you know, when you're outside with an SLR, right? You never look at the back of your SLR LCD screen, you're taking pictures. You look through the viewfinder, right? That's right. So this is your viewfinder in the sky. Wow, I can see us right now. This is really, really fun. Well, there it goes. Uh, now, the Glyph, does it have other sensors on board as well? We have a uh, nine-axis accelerometer inside the glyph, so you can actually do head tracking uh, as well. It's kind of a developer feature that we're adding and we're working on right now. Uh, we've been working with a lot of drone manufacturers and third parties actually to enable head tracking and gimbal movement through the glyph as well. Uh, we've actually got it enabled in the Inspire that we've got right now. We'd be happy to show it to you if you'd like. I'd love to check that out. Let's go check it out. Yeah. All right, so this is pretty great. Uh, I ha still have the Avant Glyph on, but now we're flying the DJI Inspire. And uh, with Inspire, you can have a master controller and a slave controller. The slave controller controls the gimbal. And with the software you guys have running on this, it actually is now tethered to the sensors on the Glyph. So there are actually controls on here on the Glyph, right? Top and bottom here, Grant, up and down. And holding this button down, I have activated the gimbal. And as I turn and look, I'm actually controlling almost one-to-one -one movement on the gimbal and all the way 360. I can actually see my own feet right now. Look at my shoes. That's so cool. Let's take off. Yeah, absolutely. So a couple things to notice on this is that you've got full gimbal control on this. So when I fly, you'll be independent of me. So you'll be basically my cameraman. Because that's Adam shooting our video right there. 
So I could park the drone wherever you want and you can take pictures of whatever you want. So say if you were to pick up Adam or you and me, and if you're like, Grant, move the camera closer, I could move around. And you can see the bottom of the quadcopter itself. This is so much more intuitive than using the sticks to be the cinematographer. Um, and I love this. I love that if we wanted to, for example, let's try just flying high up in the air. Sure. Ready to go? Yeah. And I can track where we are and do a slow pan, for example, around the horizon by just turning my head or my body. Wow. That's really neat. Yeah, so one thing I like to do is like if I'm going out and I'm filming like a soccer game or something or a frisbee game, I'll park the drone up in the sky and then I'll put the glyph on and I'll just film from the top as if I have like a tripod in the sky. And at this point, any bit of latency actually doesn't matter that much uh, because you're, you're acting as a cinematographer. Right, a exactly. Now, another neat thing you can do is you can lock it into FPV mode right now and you can actually fly from the perspective of the drone. But right now, since I've got it in free mode, you can just look around. Now, is this still just a developer prototype or is this something that when people get the glyph and if they have an Inspire, they can implement? Yeah, they should be able to implement it. We're working on the uh, firmware to get it integrated right now, but every shipped unit will have uh, head tracking uh, installed on it. And, and as we get new and better firmware and software, we'll, we'll distribute that to the community. You want to do, uh, you wanna do a flyover? Yeah, let's do a flyover. Let me know if the, uh, I'm going to twist the glyph around. I'm going to reset your point of view too, so you're facing us. Okay. There we go. Perfect. And we'll do... Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, that's super, super neat. Really interesting use case with the Avalon Glyph. This is pretty comfortable to wear. Image quality is fantastic, especially for FPV. I'm getting basically no signal degradation or noise um, with this digital signal. And it's a lot of fun. It's a really cool use case. Thank you so much, Grant, for sharing with us. With us. Yeah, absolutely. You want to wave it out? Oh, where are we? There we go. See you guys. See you guys, and we'll have more from the Drone Rodeo at CES.